Our next speaker, she is a therapist, worldwide renowned therapist. She's not only a speaker, he's a, she's a best-selling uh, book author, and she did so many great things. She does all this hypnosis, this NLP, all this stuff, but she has her own very special way of teaching people to be good enough. I am enough is her movement, and we are very, very proud that Marisa Peer is part of the Greater Festival. And I know many of you know her, many of you love her, and we are very much looking forward to welcoming her now on the stage. Here's for you, Marisa Pia. Thank you. That's quite a welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to listen to me tell you why you should live a dietless life or an addiction-free life. So my new program is Dietless Life, but it's not really about dieting. It's about why do we get addicted to dieting? Why do we get addicted to food? Why do we get addicted to alcohol or shopping or Netflix or anything at all? Because addiction has become a massive problem. And I want to make this very simple. I'm all about make everything simple. So we get addicted because of the emptiness inside of us. It is the emptiness inside of you or you that makes you addicted to anything. And what is the emptiness inside? Well, it's really the unmet needs you had as a child. So when you're a child, you have needs, not actually very many. Let me bring this forward, make it easy. Okay. Here we go. So when you're a little baby, you only have four needs. Here they are. You need to feel safe, you need to feel loved, you need to feel connected, you need to feel significant. Not a big deal, really. And for your whole life, you always have those needs. And they're not huge, but how many of us would have a hand up and say, I still don't have those needs, mate. Let's be brave. Until I was 35, I didn't have those needs met. So if you haven't got those needs met, just be brave and put your hand up. Let's look around the room. So when we're a baby, we need to feel safe. We need to be connected. In fact, when we're born on the planet, we only have one driving need. I've got to survive. And underneath that are two other needs. To survive, I've got to find connection and avoid rejection. And we spend our entire life trying to find connection, avoid rejection. So when you're a kid, if you're safe, loved, connected, and significant, you're not going to be rejected. After you get past being a baby, some more needs. I need to be celebrated. What does that mean? I need my mum to turn up at school and go, good job. I need my parents to turn up when I'm in the school play or I do a sports day. I need to be praised. I need someone to say, hey, you're a great kid. I need someone to say I'm proud of you. Anyone will do. It could be a grandmother, a teacher. As a therapist, you would be astounded at how many people come into my room and say no one's ever told me they loved me. No one has ever said they're proud of me. I don't even think I matter. And these are 17-year-old kids, 18-year-old kids, 15-year-old children saying, I don't matter. I wouldn't even know if my parents cared about me. And a couple more I need to be seen and heard and I need to feel I'm enough. So there are needs, not a huge deal. But what is a huge deal is what happens when these needs are not met. And for many of us, they're not met. And only two things happen. The first is we give up the need. I'm never gonna matter. I'm never gonna find love. I'm never gonna get promoted. I can just stay in this house with all my cats and just give up. I'm going to sit at home and work and give up. So many of us give our needs up. Very common. And the other thing we do is we give them away. Well, Netflix is going to have to meet this need. Donuts are going to meet the need. Shopping is going to meet the need. Or I'm going to find someone out there. You'll do. And I'm going to give you all my needs and go, can you meet them? And some will go, yeah, I can actually. I can turn up and have a go, I tell you, you're amazing and I love you. But then I might get bored might find someone better than you. I might get my own needs that are going to suddenly take over your needs because I get sick or old or tired or lose my job. And now you're right back to square one. So when you give your needs up and you give your needs away, 
you become needy. So what do you do if your needs were not met and you've given them up or you've given them away and you don't know that there's option three? And I'm going to take you through option three today. We're going to do option three. Option three is meet your needs yourself. Really? Oh, really? Because it's not anyone else's job to make you happy or sexy or even orgasmic. It's your job to meet your own needs. And why don't we meet our own needs? Because we don't understand that thoughts come first. So first you think a thought, then you feel a feeling, and then you act in a certain way. Thought, feeling, behavior. If this was a triangle, here's a thought, I don't feel enough. If I start my day with I don't feel enough, I'm gonna go to a feeling, it's never a good one. I'm gonna feel sad, I'm gonna feel angry, I'm going to feel defensive. I'm going to feel hopeless, helpless, because I'm a feeling. And now I'm going to go to a behavior, which is well, I'm going to eat lots of cakes or drink lots of alcohol or act out or cry or be super defensive because of a thought. So we have a thought, a feeling, an action, and a thought. And all you have to do is change the thought. And we're so busy trying to change the feeling or the action but if you change the thoughts, so if I woke up every day and thought, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I don't matter, I'm not significant, I can't stop eating sugar, I'm incapable of giving up alcohol, I need drugs to get me through the day. Whatever I'm thinking, I gotta go straight to a feeling because the thought always comes first. You might have been told feelings come first. They don't, they do not. Apart from the feeling of falling backwards, Thoughts come in front of feelings. You can't feel a feeling like terrified of dogs or people unless you think a thought, terrified of dogs or people. So I think a thought, I feel a feeling, and if my thought is I'm not enough, my feeling is sad, hopeless, helpless, desperate, pointless, depressed, anxious, angry, irritated, pissed off, take your pick. And now I've got to go from the feeling to a behavior which is super defensive, very tearful, acting out because of the thought. So if we went backwards and go, well, okay, why don't we just change the thought? It's so like a ladder, thought, feeling, action, thought. So now I'm going to make a different thought. I'm enough. I say it's not true. Who cares? So is you're not enough. Your mind doesn't know. And it doesn't care if what you tell it is good or bad, true or false useful or utterly useless. It doesn't care. It lets it in. Your thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are a blueprint that your mind, body are trying to work to make real. You see, your mind's job is to make your thoughts real. It's really cool when you get that. Wow. My mind's job is to make my thoughts real. Absolutely. So what's your job? Your job is to make your mind's job easy by thinking better thoughts. So if I think I'm not enough, my mind is making that real. If I think I am enough, so now I'm going to think a different thought, I'm enough. What's the feeling? Well, they're all good now. I feel positive. I feel confident. I feel brave. I feel able to take risks. I feel self-assured. I have a level of self-esteem that doesn't come from out there. It comes from in here. And by the way, looking for yourself, I mean, any place except for in here is guaranteed to fail. One of the biggest problems we have is looking for our self-esteem out there, looking for our needs to be met out there. It's in here. So if I think I'm enough, I feel better. And if I feel better and I go to the actions, well, I take action, I ask someone out. I ask for a promotion. I, put, I start to monetize some ideas. I, I take action, I take risks, all because I think a better thought. So you own your thoughts. And you've got to be the CEO of your thoughts. You have to run your mind. You don't work for your mind. Your mind works for you. And when you can start to dialogue with your thoughts, your life changes dramatically. But one of the reasons these needs are never met is because we don't understand 
how to dialogue with ourselves. We talk a lot about wishing, hoping, trying. Well, trying is very trying. Wishing is very wishy-washy. And hoping just says, well, go on hoping, because you probably never, ever pull that off. So when you dialogue with yourself, your life is entirely different. And I'm going to show you something called a nicer meditation. But first, because we have enough time, I'm just going to show you how your mind makes your thoughts real, even if you don't believe them to be true. So just put your hand in front of your mouth like that. Very simple. Nothing bad is going to happen. Nothing weird or woo-woo. You're not going to start barking like a dog or clucking like a chicken. We don't do that. Put your hand in front of your mouth and just for 30 seconds, close your eyes. And I want you to imagine you are holding in your hand a big, fat, half of a juicy lemon. It's half a big, fat, juicy lemon. Put it right under your nose and breathe in that amazing smell because nothing smells quite like a lemon. Squeeze that lemon until lemon drops come to the surface. And now stick out your tongue and lick off those drops of lemon. Open your mouth really wide and shove that entire half a lemon into your mouth and start sucking and biting and chewing. I want you to eat that entire half a lemon. Bite into every lemon segment. Bite it. Swirl a lemon around your mouth. Suck it. Chew it until your taste buds pucker and swell and start pumping out saliva to a thought and open your eyes. And here's a trick question. Put up your hand if there was a lemon. You can't get this wrong, but put up your hand if there was no lemon. Put up your hand if you never put up your hand, whatever the question is. I can see lots of you doing that. You see, this is a neutral, it's not good or bad. There wasn't a lemon, but there was a lemon. It was in your head. You told your mind you're eating a lemon, your mind went, it's very acidic, not good for tooth enamel. Let me wash that away. Because don't forget, even 400 years ago, with that Nutribullet, you needed your teeth to survive because you had to bite and crunch food. So if you can think of a lemon and make it real, what else could you think of and make real? You've got to think of these needs and decide that you can meet your own needs, that you are confident, that you are self-assured, that you believe in yourself. 80% of success, 80% is mindset. If you're busy trying to make something work and pull something off without the mindset of I'm worth it, I deserve it, I can have it, it doesn't work. To have what you want, you need to do three things. You need to know you're worth it, know what it looks like and go and get it. But going and getting it and knowing what it looks like without knowing you're worth it doesn't work. So I'm going to do something today. It's something I created called Nicer Meditation. It's really simple, but it just might change your entire life. And this is what you're going to do. I'm going to show you first. You're going to touch the area in between your eyes and make a little indentation. I'm going to think about not what you want, but what you require, what you are going to give yourself. And when you've impressed upon yourself what you require, what you insist on, what you can give yourself, you're going to open out your hands and you're going to feel what it feels like to know you're worth it. A little voice will go, oh, that doesn't work. And then just going to move side to side, just two inches in your chair to the left and right. You're going to erase that old stuff. So we've got four minutes and 46 seconds, which is exactly how long we need. Take those two fingers, close your eyes. I'm going to tell you what to say so that you don't have to think about it. But when you leave here today, you're going to keep this going. Close your eyes. Touch that area in between your eyes. Make a little circle. And I want you to repeat after me with unshakable conviction in your voice. I insist on unshakable confidence. I give myself unshakable confidence. I insist on knowing I matter. Every day I remind myself I matter. I'm enough. 
I'm significant. I'm lovable just the way I am. Think about what you really want, and I want you to say, what I give to myself, what I require for myself, what I insist on for myself, is knowing I'm lovable, knowing I matter, knowing I'm worth it. Think of those unmet needs right now and imagine giving them to yourself. So one more time, make a little indentation and with unshakable conviction in your voice, repeat after me. What I insist on for myself, what I give to myself, what I require for myself is knowing I matter, knowing I'm lovable, knowing I'm worth it. Open out your hands. And I want you to really feel that feeling. Feel that feeling of knowing you're enough. Remember, 80% of having what you want is the mindset of knowing you're worth it. So feel that feeling. What does it feel like in your body when you know you're worth it? What does it look like when you walk through the world knowing, hey, I'm worth love, I'm worth praise, I'm worth connection, everything I want, I'm worth it, I deserve it, because I'm enough, always have been, always will be. What does that look like and feel like and sound like? How do you show up in the world when you know that you're enough? And you don't need addictions or diets or workouts or any of those things. You don't need to Netflix your feelings or shop them or eat them or buy them or drink them because you know you're enough. What does that feel like? And just in case you think, oh, I've done all this before, it doesn't work, just move side to side from your left to right. Just sway an inch to the left in your chair, an inch to the right, and with your eyes closed, I want you to feel yourself erasing, eradicating, eliminating that negative voice. It is your voice, by the way. No one's running up and going, oh, you suck. It only comes from you. And you have the power to get rid of that voice, to get rid of your critical voice, and to put in a cheerleader that whoops and claps and goes, yeah, you can do anything. This has your name all over it. So move from side to side for another 15 seconds. Erase, eradicate, eliminate the critical voice and put in a cheerleader that does cartwheels, bangs cymbals, screams your name, even a troop of cheerleaders. So let's pull this all together. Put your Fingers in between your eyes. Think about something that you require, that you insist on, and say, what I require for myself is, what I insist on for myself is, impress upon yourself that you are worth it, that you require it, that you're ready to give it to yourself. Open out your hands and code in that feeling of knowing you are worth it, knowing you matter, knowing you're enough. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What does it sound like? And while you're coding in the fact that you are worth it, you deserve everything with bells on, at the same time, just move from side to side and just erase, eradicate, eliminate that critical voice and install a cheerleader doing cartwheels. You see, a cheerleader, even on a bad day, still cheers. They go, you did great. You'll do better next time. And when you do this, you're going to meet all your unmet needs all the time, every day. You can meet all your unmet needs. So open your eyes. Come back into the room. I'd love to spend longer with you, but I'm out of time. But if you go to marissapeer.com, we have all of this free. Go to dietlesslife.com, go to rtt.com, and we'll give you everything you need to live a life without addictions because you really are worth it. Thank you so much. You've been amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Marisa. Thank, Thank you, you so much that you came to Germany to share this experience with us. How do you feel? How is it in front of this? Oh, it's amazing. You know, we have the biggest group of RTT therapists in Germany, and a lot of them are here. Yes. And I love Germany. We just did a training in Berlin. It was so cool. So I love it here. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Check out my next video here. You've got to be very, very clear with the brain because this is your brain's job and it really is a specific. Your brain's job is to keep you alive on the planet and it does that by moving you away from anything that it thinks will cause you pain. So when we were tribes people, we didn't really wander too far from the tribe. We didn't eat anything that looked a bit odd because we survived by linking pain to something and, and life hasn't changed. Anyone here ever eaten something that's made them really, really sick like mushrooms?